This is WKRM, Channel 2, Nashville. Film deals with the drug underworld. Although edited for television, it contains scenes of violence and drug abuse, which may be unsuitable for young viewers. Parental discretion is advised. I know filthy criminal. I know thief. I'm Tony Montana, political prisoner from Cuba. Where'd you get that beauty star, tough guy? An ABC premiere presentation. In 1980, he came ashore with the dregs of Cuba's prisons. All right, big man, you want to make some big bucks? And it's just up. You know something about cocaine? It's getting me away. You stay loyal in this business. You're going to move up. You're going to move up fast. Saddle. From the gutter, he carved an underworld empire. With the right woman, they're not stopping me. I could go right to the top. I told you a long time ago, you filthy little monkey, not to fool with me. Hey, hey, who the hell do you think you're talking to, huh? Start. I was the one who believed in you. Who put this thing together? Me! That's who! Who do I trust? Me! Tonight, Brian De Palma's shocking tale of the underside of the American dream. Who did you fight with, man? Eh? Al Pacino, Michelle Pfeiffer. So long, pal. Robert Loggia and Mary Elizabeth Mastriotonio. You can't stand for another man to be loving me. The Unforgettable. Scarface. Next. Aren't you part of the Cuban crime wave? What you talking crazy for? An ABC News brief. Now from Washington, Brit Hill. Good evening. Libya's Colonel Gaddafi made an unexpected public appearance in Tripoli today, telling foreign reporters he wants direct talks with Washington to resolve tensions over that factory that the U.S. claims is the chemical weapons plant. In Paris, Secretary of State Schultz made a thinly veiled reference to the plant and Libya's alleged plans for it at an international conference on chemical weapons. Delegates to that conference hope to eliminate one of the most dreaded forms of warfare, as Don Kladstrup reports. It was World War I that first revealed the true horror of chemical warfare and convinced world leaders chemical weapons should be banned. But more than half a century later, the work continues. French and President Mitterrand telling representatives of more than 140 countries today, chemical arms must be condemned unconditionally. The five-day conference is aimed at strengthening the 1925 Geneva Protocol, which bans use of chemical weapons, but not production. The threat of terrorism was raised by U.S. Secretary of State George Shultz. There are no insurmountable technical obstacles that would prevent terrorist groups from using chemical weapons. The threat is a real one. Some governments, which have been known to sponsor terrorism, now have sizable chemical weapons capabilities. Like Iraq, whose use of chemical weapons during the recent Gulf War against Iran, and later against Iraqi Kurds, was one of the reasons the conference was called for. Secretary Schultz, however, did not mention Iraq by name, or Libya, which the U.S. claims is building a chemical weapons factory. In fact, as a reception at the Elysee Palace seemed to prove this evening, delegates are trying to maintain a civil, if not harmonious, atmosphere and to avoid name-calling so that the mission of the conference can be fulfilled. Don Cladstrup, ABC News, Paris. The controversy over Libya's chemical plant will be one of the topics tomorrow on ABC's This Week with David Brinkley. And I'll have more news later on The Weekend Report. An update on the threat of severe weather tonight on Channel 2 News. And now we continue with Scarface. Today's Duracell batteries still have up to 90% of their life. There's a date that proves it. So you've got nothing to be 
afraid of. Today's Duracell. Date coated for three years storage. Got great curves? Great curves deserve 18 hour. Playtex 18 hour bra. Supports full figures more beautifully. On the American agenda, the environment, big city cleanups. They're treating more than just the city's litter problem. Monday, watch ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. A crackdown on illegal hunting. Details on the news tonight. Now we continue with Scarface. Tonight's movie, Scarface, will continue in a moment. An ABC News break. Now from Washington, Britt Hume. Good evening. President Reagan is resting comfortably tonight after surgery this morning on one of his hands. The operation to correct a curvature of a finger was a success, as Lark McCarthy reports. President Reagan is spending the night at Walter Reed Army Medical Center following a two-and-a-half-hour operation on his left hand. The operation should correct a bent ring finger, a condition called Dupuytren's contracture, which was beginning to affect the president's grip. The White House says Mr. Reagan is in good spirits, and his doctor says the 77-year-old patient came through the operation with flying colors. First Lady Nancy Reagan spent much of the day with her husband following the surgery and said he's doing fine. The president is expected to be released from the hospital tomorrow. He'll be wearing an arm bandage and a sling for several days. His spokesman insists Mr. Reagan will maintain a full schedule. Mark McCarthy, ABC News, the White House. In his weekly radio address taped before the surgery, the president said the budget he'll send Congress Monday will cut the deficit without cutting benefits to the poor or raising taxes. In Tokyo, thousands jammed the area around the Imperial Palace today following the death of 87-year-old Emperor Hirohito. Emperor Akihito, who immediately assumed the throne following his father's death, was awarded the symbols of his new position in a ceremony at the palace. In Tripoli today, Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi paid a surprise visit to foreign journalists and called for direct talks with Washington over escalating tensions between Libya and the United States. Gaddafi told the reporters, quote, force does not pay, especially with Libya. Also in Libya today, government buses carried reporters to the site of the factory near Rabda, suspected of producing chemical weapons. Although the trip was designed to prove the plant is used only for producing medicine, reporters arrived at the plant after dark and were not allowed to enter the factory. And that's News Brief. I'll have more news later on the Weekend Report. What would you do if someone you love was the object of someone else's sexual desire? If they're having sex with my wife, only I make love to my wife. She looks at him and says, I love, I love the pictures, but um, I don't like some of the positions. <laughs> I respect her as much as any man can respect his wife. Period. Oh, my friends think it's great. They all want his autograph. My neighbors come running down the street whenever he comes to visit us. Porn stars and their families on the next Geraldo. Monday at 3 on Channel 2. A hit-and-run driver says it was all a mistake on Channel 2 News Tonight. And now we continue with Scarface. For the first time in 45 years, illegal hunters in Wayne County are being hunted. The man accused of running over a nine-year-old Nashville boy talks about the fatal night and why he didn't stop to turn himself in. Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi surprises the United States and American reporters in what's being called an orchestrated event. Good evening, I'm John Clark. Those stories tonight on Channel 2 News. Plus, Middle Tennessee is still under a tornado watch. Join us for details after the movie. On the next Cosby Show. Let's open up a little bit there. I can see your feet. Monday at 4 on Channel 2. Something fun's happening here weeknights at 6.30. It's Family Feud. And the survey says you're going to love it. Catch the feud here on WKRN Channel 2. Continue with Scarface. This is WKRN Channel 2, Nashville. State and federal officers crack down on illegal deer hunting. And that story tops this Saturday edition of Channel 2 News at 10. This is Channel 2 News at 10 with John Clark, Lauren Terry, Missy Oxford's weather, and Tony Troiano on sports. Good evening. It is a case of the hunter being hunted in Wayne County tonight. 
Federal agents, the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, and local law enforcement there banded together to put a stop to what they say is destroying the deer population in the area. Channel 2's Terry Rowland reports. 